skip it up and that up. Holy lactating cow nipples. I'm actually doing a PC video. I know you're shocked. You may even have a boner. What's going on, Richard Review Tech USA? Now, why am I building a secondary PC? Well, you guys know I had the Asus gaming laptop, and my brother really wanted a gaming PC for the holidays. And he's younger, he's 11. The, the gaming laptop was portable. He really only wants to play Minecraft and Left 4 Dead. It would be more than perfect for that. And as a first PC, yeah, he's a spoiled little shit. That thing has an upgraded SSD in it and 24 gigs of RAM. It's just better for him. And I, I, I wanted to get a desktop again because it's just easier to upgrade parts. And as much as I strongly, strongly recommend the Asus gaming laptops, I had a fantastic time with it. The portable machine was a better fit for my little brother, and me having a secondary desktop for work and play was a better fit for me. And I really wanted to give AMD's 8-core FX chip the 8350 a shot. I, I, I know people either love it or hate it, but whatever, I'll talk about that more. I'm going to get to that later. But here is the case I'm going to get for this build. Now, you're going to hear me look over because I have all the windows open. Now, I ordered these parts from Amazon, I'm going to have links for Newegg.com in the description. Now you're saying, Rich, I thought you hate Newegg. Uh, yeah, they left a very bad taste in my mouth. But if you're not an Amazon Prime member, the prices are all over the place on Newegg. And they're they're just, they really, the prices are fluctuating on there. So, I mean, I got everything to get a good deal because I'm a Prime member. But if you're not, eh, it's you're better off getting it either from Tiger Direct or Newegg. So there you go, Newegg. As reluctant as I am, I'm going to send people over to your page. So anyway, uh, the first thing I got is the Fractal Design R4 Black Pearl uh, PC case. The It's an ATX form factor case. Why did I get this? It gets nothing but top ratings across the board. It's been recommended by a ton of reviewers. It has clean lines. It's cool. It's quiet. Um, it has tons of space inside for cable management. I'm, you know, I'm a 32 year old man. And I, if you're out there and if you want to get one of those cases that, you know, has a space alien holding a dildo, Godspeed to you. They're out there for you. I want something clean, cool, professional looking. And this de definitely has it. And I've heard nothing, nothing but good things about this case. Um, I'm looking at Newegg right now. It's $99.99 on there. That's what I spent on it too. Uh, Amazon didn't really have any deals on it. So it's a good case. I hear nothing but great things about it. So if you're looking to do a PC build, I cannot recommend this enough. Um, like I said, there's a, I'm looking at Newegg right now. It's where I got the pictures from and everything. It has 174 five-star ratings. It got nothing but top ratings. So I can't recommend this enough. Try this case out. So video cards, I was going to go all out and go full derp and get like a 290. I was even thinking 290X and then I came back down to earth. I wanted to keep this build sub $1,000 and I, I, I achieved that even with shipping. Um, now I was going to go, like I said, with a 290, but I just did the price on it. Well, they were $400, $500. You know, Amazon had a couple deals and then the deals went away by the time I got to it and they went back up to 500 and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to spend, I mean, yeah, I will game on this rig from time to time, but gaming is going to be far from its main thing. I just want a solid, stable, capable video card. And this one from SFX, you can hear my mouse click for a second here. The Double D FX-787 A. It's a Radeon HD 7870 gigahertz edition with two gigabyte frame buffer on there of GDDR5 memory it is going to definitely do the job. And then some, this car gets a ton of good reviews. It's going to handle everything you, out, you, throw, you play on your system out there, you know, at high max settings. And it's going to give you a good gaming experience. Is it going to be as good as having a 290 in there? No, but a 290 costs almost $500. This costs around 200. Some places have rebates. Sometimes Amazon has some discounts. Sometimes New Wake has some discounts. Sometimes Tiger Direct has some discounts. Sometimes they don't. So expect to spend anywhere between like 200 and 240 for this card. And you're getting a lot of performance for the dollar. 
And you, this one, like I said, this isn't, I think the standard 7870s have one gigabyte of RAM. This has two, so you'll have a pretty ample frame buffer on there to hold all your textures for your newest games. And it, like I said, a ton of bang for the buck, around $200, and you're getting a very good gaming card. And you'll save a lot of money, and don't be impulsive like me. So I decided to restrain myself and get a cheaper graphics card, and this one will definitely do the job. So I'm very happy. I chose this SFX or XFX 7870. And probably the most controversial part of this build, the CPU. I chose the AMD FX 8350 Vishira. This is a four gigahertz, eight core CPU from AMD. Now I'm gonna give you a backstory on the whole FX line. Now when they first announced the FX chips, AMD was hyping the living shit out of them, that they were, going to be the most affordable chip out there they were going to trump anything that intel had to offer they were the first eight core chip and everyone was so hyped about them and then when they first came out i believe it was bulldozer was the first iteration of these eight core fx chips they hit with a resounding thud it's not that they were complete slouches but they were pretty much behind the intel core i7s of the time and everyone's like, all right, AMD, you release this chip, you were made eight cores, and it was supposed to have all this, you know, it was supposed to be so superior, or at least on par with Intel's top offerings, and it was actually a step behind. And people were very disappointed by it, but they did have its defenders out there saying, for the price, you're getting a good bang for the buck. So people either love the FX line from AMD or they hate them. I don't know how I feel on them yet. This is going to be my first eight core AMD FX chip. And you know, I trust Logan from Tech Syndicate. He says this chip is a huge bang for the buck. And, you know, he went into it, you know, not being biased towards AMD or Intel. And he left pleasantly surprised by its performance. And I hope I feel the same way. I know some people that own this chip, the CPU, and love it. So we'll see. You know, hopefully it does, you know, really surprise me and wow me. I mean, 199 for an 8-core 4 gigahertz chip or CPU, I mean to say, is a hell of a deal. And hopefully it doesn't disappoint. Now, an interesting side note is that both of the consoles from PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, the next-gen consoles, have eight core processors in them. So maybe we'll see games actually for the PC because you know how it goes. The consoles dictate how powerful or what, how much hardware is utilized on PCs. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll see games actually take advantage of eight cores in the future, in the not so distant future. So maybe we'll see AMD's eight core chips, you know, their potential be fully realized. I don't know. Right now I'm talking out of my ass, but that could happen. So let's see how the AMD FX 8350 stacks up. You know, it has 1,200 reviews because I'm looking where I got the picture from on Newegg. It has 1,200 five star reviews on Newegg. So. I can't picture that many people just being fanboys of AMD and just writing reviews just to praise this chip, even if it sucks. So who knows? I'll shut up now. Let's go on to the next part. So this is actually kind of going to be uncharted territory with me, but this actually gets a lot of good reviews too. And I didn't want to, you know, go over that thousand dollar mark, but I also still wanted to get the speed of a solid state drive, but I also didn't want to, you know, just get a solid state drive and skimp out on storage space. So I got the Seagate hybrid drive. That has, this has a two terabyte standard mechanical hard drive and an eight gigabyte SSD. And how this works, I'm not even sure, but I, I read up on it a little bit. It actually sees what files do you use the most, like you boot into Windows and your, and your larger files, and it caches those or stores those in the, the solid state part. So when you go to boot your computer, it boots like a solid state drive, and then you just, you know, run the rest of your programs how you normally would. And it kind of does it on autopilot from what I've read. I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but this is the first time I'm going to be using a hybrid drive where it's solid state and a standard hard drive. And it's pretty damn close to in speed and performance to a solid state drive. Maybe the reviewers I saw were bullshitting. But we'll find out. So it's pretty. If it does work out well, this is a damn good deal. I mean, it's 139 for this uh, solid state hybrid drive, and you know it goes down like when, a couple weeks ago it was like 119. It goes up to like almost 160. 
but I'm getting basically all the benefits of a solid state drive and the huge storage of a two terabyte mechanical hard drive. Hopefully this works out well, because if it does, that's awesome. Moving on. So what motherboard did I choose? I chose the Gigabyte GA-97A-UD3P AM3 Plus motherboard. This will definitely handle the AMD FX 8350 CPU. It has the Crossfire capability. I'm not a Crossfire or SLI guy. I just like one GPU or graphics card. And if you know, if I want, I need more power, I'll upgrade it. It's just a better way to go. It's more stable just having one graphics card. The only reason you should need to have more than one graphics card is if you bought the top of the top of the top of the line from AMD or NVIDIA. And the only way to get more power is to buy another top of the line graphics card. But if you're not doing that, don't SLI. Just buy one card and it'll just be a much more stable gaming experience. But anyway, this has USB 3.0. I love... I love, 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 love Gigabyte uh, motherboard products. I've been using them for years. They've never failed me once. All of their products are rock solid. And this is a good price. I got it for about 90-ish dollars. Sometimes it goes up to 110. Sometimes it goes at the upper 90s. But it's tons of features for the price. Gigabyte is a hell of a brand. Asus I like too. I like Gigabyte a little bit better, but Asus makes great motherboards as well. Either Asus or Gigabyte, you can't go wrong. And this will handle everything I need for this upcoming build. So good price, lots of features, nice and stable, good performance, can't go wrong. So what did I choose for a power supply? I chose something that is going to be, it's a little over the top. It's 750 watts. It has 62 amps on the 12 volt rail. But I like, you know, even though I did cut a couple corners with this rig, I wasn't go, gonna go for the cheapest parts possible because I wanna make this so that I could upgrade it in the future. And okay, yeah, you could save yourself a couple bucks now, but if you have to upgrade everything just to upgrade your graphics card, for example, you have to upgrade your power supply. You know, you gotta add more RAM or you gotta add other things. If you gotta add extra to just cause you want to save a couple bucks now, it's gonna cost you even more in the future. So I got, this is the Thermaltake Smart Series SP-750 PCBUS. It's a 750 watt power supply, like I said. It's 80 plus certified. It's not modular. I, I cut a corner with that to save some bucks. It's not modular, but with a good um, cable management in the uh, fractal design case that I got, not really too concerned about it. So the 80 plus, yeah, it means it saves you a couple bucks on your electric bill, not too much. But what it means also is they put high quality parts in there. There's 80 plus silver as well. There's 80 plus gold. I think there's even platinum now. But I got this because I know maybe in the future, if I want to upgrade the power supply, I know this is going to have plenty of juice to do it. Those 62 amps on the single 12 volt rail. It's not multiple 12 volt rails. It's a single 12 volt rail. will handle pretty much any single GPU you want to put on there. So this was a good choice. It's a good quality power supply and it was a good price it was around about 80 something bucks for it so i can't complain tons of power here it's going to be good clable good stable clean power and it was affordable can't go wrong with this power supply for your rig now let's talk about ram man ram has gotten expensive what the hell happened did like a bunch of zebras with erections go through like a ram manufacturing plant that's why the prices are so high Anyway, uh, this is this RAM is nothing special. It's G-Skill Ripjaws Z-Series, 8 gigabytes RAM. Each stick, each stick of the four sticks here is 2 gigabytes each. 1,600 megahertz RAM. Uh, I could have went with 1,866, but not going to notice too much of a performance difference there. And I saved myself a couple bucks. Honestly, I'd like to get 32 gigs in the future, but I'm hoping that RAM prices come back down before I did that. Now, ideally for video editing, you should have 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you could get away with 8 gigabytes of RAM to do video editing. This will run Windows 7 just fine. All games out there, I th they usually require at most now 6 gigabytes, so I'll be good with all the games coming out. And in the future, I'll maybe I'll upgrade to 16 gigabytes or 32, who knows. But 8 gigabytes will hold me down just fine now. Uh, this was about 75 bucks. Uh, you could find it. it's pretty much the same price on both Amazon and new egg so take your pick i mean you could buy better ram this is the ram i got so if you want to spend the extra money maybe upgrade to 16 gigabytes of ram or get ram that's clocked at 1866 megahertz you can do that this is what i chose and i'm fine with it for now
And I got two Samsung DVD burners. Because my, even my main rig doesn't have a DVD burner. Uh, they're about 20 bucks. They're SATA. They play DVDs. They burn DVDs. They read DVD ROMs. Um, yeah, that's it. I like boobs. Man, do I like boobs. Yes, I do. So there you have it, guys. That is my secondary AMD PC rig, gaming rig, video editing rig. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it handles all of those. Now, I'm not going to show a video of me building this. I just don't have an extra camera guy hanging around. I'm not like Linus Tech Tips where he has a guy that he's paying a salary to sit there and film him. And it's very tough to do and, and to sit there and to try to get camera angles. Then if I get the wrong camera angle and I don't show the part being properly installed, I got to uninstall it and reinstall it. Just no, especially this is my per these are my personal items. I don't want to risk damaging them. So that's why I don't show me building uh, PCs and putting PC parts in too often or at all, actually. But anyway, if you have any questions on any of these parts, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting Review Tech USA. Have a good one.